Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Hi, folks. Welcome back. And those of you that are new, welcome. This is a follow-up video on my review of Sound of Freedom, which I saw Sunday afternoon here in upstate New York in Binghamton. Uh, not at an AMC theater, but at a Regal theater, and there were no issues at all. This is a follow-up from my review to the so-called critics review. And you're going to find something very astounding here. I'm absolutely stupefied. If you don't like a movie, you don't like a movie, and you give the reasons why. But the reasons are just totally off the hook. Let's, uh, let's get to it. Sorry to give you guys a little agita, as we say in Italian. But this is from Wikipedia. A review aggregator of Rotten Tomatoes, the film has approval rating of 72% based on 36 reviews, with the average rating of 6.7 out of 10. The website's critics' consensus reads, Sound of Freedom is an effective and suspenseful call to action against human trafficking, yet not free of issues in its depiction of the sensitive subject matter. And it is an incredibly sensitive subject matter. On Metacritic, the film has a weight average of 43 out of 100, based on six critics indicating mixed or average reviews. Okay. Variety's Owen uh, Glibberman gave the film a positive review, writing, Let's assume that, like me, you're not a right-wing fundamentalist conspiracy theorist looking for a dark film-based suspense film to see over the holiday weekend. Even then, you needn't hold extreme beliefs to experience Sound of Freedom as a compelling movie that shines an authentic light on one of the most critical criminal horrors of our time, one that Hollywood has mostly shied away from. True, because it's an incredibly sensitive subject, but I'm not defending Hollywood. Film Threats' Alan Neg also recommended the film Sound of Freedom as almost as if you're listening to Tim Ballard tell the incredible story of rescuing children and having it dramatized on screen. It's heartfelt, informative, and inspiring. All right. I think those are all legitimate reviews. But now we get into the nut bars, the real nut bars, the progressive left nut bars that will defend this kind of thing or be against this kind of thing forever. Rolling Stone, Miles Glee, gave a more critical review. Now, I'm going to say this slowly because it's so, it's so off the hook. Sound of Freedom is a stomach-turning experience. That's the beginning of, of his critique. Fetishizing the torture of its child victims and lingering over lush preludes to their sexual abuse. Who's fetishizing torture? It's unbelievable. Where do these people come up with this? This vigilante fever dream and come away thinking themselves better informed on a hidden civilizational crisis. Well, it's profoundly depressing. It's hidden civilizational crisis because of people like you. Worse still, they'll want to spread the word. He's being critical of the fact that individuals that made this film, that distribute it, that have done the tour on uh, public, public media, that they want to spread the word to stop what's happening to children in the U.S. and worldwide. After all, America's number one, number one customer of this kind of filth. It's incredible to me. A, a vigilante fever dream. You know, you don't like a movie, you don't like it. Let's move on. It actually gets worse. The New York Times. Glenn Kenny, writing for the New York Times, similarly noted, the queasiness derives from a contemporary thriller vibes of the police procedural material. Are you, are you kidding me? Then there are scenes in which actual child actors perform being prepped for provocative pictures by adult groomers. Where are the ethics of depiction here? Are you, are you kidding me? This is, it's make-believe. 
They're just child actors. But it's not make-believe during pride parades. It's not make-believe during drag shows. It's not make-believe when they're sitting around in a classroom and somebody is reading something to an elementary school student that's so sexual and provocative. That's not grooming? What are the ethics of depiction here? The makers of this film initially seem to be grappling with how to properly tell this story. I think they told the story very clearly and precisely. He went on to say the director, Alejandro Monteverde, does have some sense of flourish with, with several single-point perspective shots and considered dissolves, but concluded... Oddly, the picture's muted tone ultimately undercuts its solemn sense of mission. So they're being critical because it didn't bring the point up enough about the trafficking that goes on with children in the world? Are you the queasiness deprives some contemporary thriller vibes of police procedural material. Are these people insane? Be a real critic. If you don't like it, you don't like it. I get it. RogerEbert.com now. They're not around anymore, so it's not e Roger and Ebert. Nick Allen was also negative. Listen to this. Sound of Freedom is a solemn, drawn-out bore with not a particularly bold narrative stance. They didn't take a bold stance against child trafficking in the world and in the United States? Did he see? About two minutes into the credits at the end is the actor that played. Uh, the individual that did the rescue. He didn't take a bold stance. Caring about the safety of children is roughly the easiest cause for any remotely decent human being. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It is the easiest cause to go behind to protect children. But while being so committed to such solemnity and suffering, the transcated storytelling by co-writers Monteverde and Roger Bard neglects to flesh out its ideas or characters or add any more intensity to Ballard's slow, slow, slow burn search for two kids in particular whose faces haunt him. Flesh out its ideas or characters or add any more intensity to Ballard's that slow burn? It, it, this is not a documentary, it's a movie. Slate says Sam Adams said in his review that the movie appears to be a straightforward search and rescue thriller. In a lot of ways, that's true. And which Baylor, a special agent of the Department of Homeland Security, goes rogue to free a young girl from the clutches of the Colombian sex trafficking ring. But it arrived in theaters thrown up by a cloud of innuendo put forth by its star and its noisiest right wing supporters. Conspiratorial insu insinuations about who doesn't want this story to be told and what real-world traffickers are really up to. That was the media. That was the media. Conspiratorial insinuations. you got to be kidding me. Who cares? That's the politics that's evolved around it. You're a critic of the movie itself. Faith-based reviews were largely positive. Crosswalks, Michael Faust, said the film was painful to watch, but necessary, and I agree. It's exactly right. It's painful to watch, but necessary. Adding that the actor is marvelous is Tim Ballard. The cinematography, music score, and script are perfect. This is not a movie you'll watch again and again, but it's a film you'll recommend to family and friends. Cinematically, it's excellent. Yeah, I agree. I got to give that one a... But here's the thing. The same actor that played Tim Ballard in this movie also played Christ in The Passion of the Christ. I saw The Passion of the Christ once. And like this movie, it's more than enough. Painful to watch is an understatement for The Passion of the Christ and Sound of Freedom. It dead hits home and it's necessary to see. And they go on to talk about the, if you want to see the details of the money and the percentages. The film has gross as of the 16th of July, 85 and a half million. It's probably close to 100 now. 
and is the 18th highest grossing film of 2023 in the U.S. and Canada. And there were rumors about AMC theaters canceling screenings, disrupting viewings. My understanding is the people that distribute this film, who I believe say that AMC responded with expanding it to 445 more theaters. I don't think it was AMC. I think it was individual theater managers or employees. That's just my opinion. But the fact of the matter is, I went to Regal on Sunday to see it, so I wasn't involved with AMC. It's, um, these rumors are not accurate. It's stated that due to positive reception and consumer demand, AMC has added 450 additional theaters on July 14th. And it goes on about the faith-based appeal, which is really weird because, you know, does it have a religious appeal? Yeah. The individual that's involved in the movie, the real-life person, as well as the actor, is very devout Christians. I believe Mr. Ballard is also Mormon. That has nothing to do with nothing. They only mention God twice. And one of the things they mention in this film is really, really one of the most heart-wrenching it lines ever from a movie. And in fact, when he said it in the movie and I saw it in the trailer, it gave me goosebumps. They asked him why he's doing this. Why did Ballard risk his life? Why did he do all these things to help get these kids out? And he said, God's children are not for sale. And I get goosebumps just thinking about it. That's faith-based? My God, my God. We're talking about children, and they're talking about a special screening. President Trump will host a special screening at the film. Now, it's funny. Whenever you see Wikipedia, they don't say President Trump. They say Donald Trump, but I think it's disrespectful. I say President Obama. I say President Biden quite often. will host a special screening at the Trump National Golf Club in Bedminster during the week of July 23rd, and the actors... And a lot of other people are expected to appear. Now, well, that automatically will make it QAnon. This is a QAnon conspiracy fever dream of, of, of conspiratorial people that think that there's rich billionaires that are harvesting children to drink their blood. It, it, give me a break. This is not what this is about. I think what they're upset about is this is the fact, the fact that millions of people who aren't political junkies like myself and many of you out there, just everyday average Americans that spend 99% of their time working, taking care of their families, doing their, their religious beliefs on a personal level that aren't involved in marches and protests and, and the politics or anything, are seeing this and it's opening up eyes. Now, how can this be stopped or dramatically curtailed? That's the question. Will this movie supply that? Or just people in the House of Representatives, the Senate and the White House just say, though, we need to do this and need to do that. And in the end, nothing really gets done. Remember, this is not a documentary. It's a movie. And it's trying to prove a point is trying to prove what's going on in the world. And according to the authors and the individuals involved in the movie, child trafficking around the world for slave labor and other things that we can't mention here is now past the illegal gun trade worldwide. It's not as much revenue and money brought in as the drug trade, but it's getting close. If that doesn't scare the hell out of you, I don't know what does. So there you are. There's the critics' reviews. Take it for what it's worth. Something has to be done. And I think securing the border is a major step. There are now 85,000 estimated unaccompanied minors in the United States alone that we have no idea where they ended up. Think about that for a minute. That's over a thousand per state. Think about that. What are you going to do about it? Until the next time, God bless, goodbye, and good luck. Mm -hmm.